Thanks for checking out this video that I do on Monday, sitting down with Kirk from What's New Video Games, and his name will be clickable uh, in the link below. And we're talking about Rise of the Ronin and how it's looking a little rough. Not necessarily bad, but we're hearing some frames per second maybe issues. Also, people are taking issue with the fidelity of the game. Some saying it does not look like a current gen game, but then the pushback is it's a Team Ninja game. So we're going to be kind of chopping that up uh, because the game comes out this week. And it's not the only game coming out this week with some performance, you know, faux pas, we'll say that. So thanks for being here, Kirk. Glad to have you back once more. Always a pleasure. Got to come up with something different to say, but it's always a pleasure. I'm going to end the previous stream and redirect everybody over and make sure as you guys come over that you smash that like button. Give us those first 100 likes. It really helps us out. And I just want to start by saying... Why do you think this game, we're going to be letting Skill Up's uh, preview sort of run here. Make sure and check out his video. It's quite good. Um, Which is he, all B-roll, we should say. Nobody yeah, that's, ha- nobody's been able to show any fo- any of their own footage. The embargo mandates that you show um, Koei Tecmo, or, or play, I guess play, Tony PlayStation's, um, provided B-roll for the game. So nobody's been able to show their own footage. So it's going to be the best... The best look for the game possible which is another reason that i think people are a little bit a little bit iffy because it's like why won't they let people show their actual gameplay what, what's up there you know that's not necessarily it's not necessarily right. indicative of bad things but it doesn't inspire confidence either it's sort of neutral well and i think that's why i'm okay with just like letting it roll like this isn't yeah. something that like skill up spend a bunch of time playing and you know it's his raw sure, footage sure, sure. but i but like I just want to add that that it's it's going to portray the game in the best light for sure for anybody watching um it's it's curated from from the publisher and, well that always adds a little bit of concern with me let me make sure it's going to loop here that always adds a little bit of concern to me because like he's saying skill up said let's just start with frames per second cuz that's a big topic lately we were just kind of yeah. talking about it with the PS5 Pro and Dragon's Dogma 2 is coming out at 30 and it's uncapped 30, which John Lineman takes issue with from Digital Foundry. He says if they would have capped it at 30, mm-hmm. it would resolve some of the frame timing issues that are even showing up in Dragon's Dogma 2. But in Rise of the Ronin, Skillop said he had sections dropping into the 40s. Now, Fextra Life said they were having a mostly smooth performance, but I, there, we, we can't know because yeah. we're having to deal with B-roll. So does that give you any concern that this game is going to maybe struggle to maintain that 60, which I think is super important in a game like this? So um, I've, I've only been able to watch so many previews, but the ones that I did that mentioned from frame rate to come to mind are skill ups. He said, he said it seemed like it was around 45 to his untrained eye um, with frequent dips noticeable dips so that would be getting down into 40 and, and maybe even like 35 even or high th- high 30s um and then Arex did coverage a uh, preview coverage of it as well mm-hmm. um and they said well to you know they basically i'm paraphrasing for them now but they're basically like well to hell with it all we'll just go you know ray tracing fidelity mode or whatever which is capped at 30 and then they weren't getting 30. So that's sort of two 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 Oof. different alternatives there. You've got the performance mode. Skill up says he's not getting anywhere close to sixty consistently, and then Arex were like, "Well, we'll try the the graphical fidelity mode," and they weren't getting the cap thirty consistently. So it's like you can't even really uh, uh, optimize your your playthrough by going with the fidelity option and getting all the bells and whistles, and then that at least hitting thirty locked. You're not even getting that. So. There seemed to be some kind of um, some kind of frame rate issues here on the base PS5 yeah. with this game, but we, we really aren't able to kind of tell what they are looking at the B-roll footage, which is why I wanted to kind of point that out. Um, well, I want to I, I want to say something on that because I don't <laughs> like. I'll be honest. From the very first gameplay showing of this game, I have been on record saying. This looks kind of rough. It looks kind of dated. Mm. Even some of the animations, like the horse, uh, even Asmongold made fun of the horse animation for the same thing I saw. It's like, it just looks stiff and looks rigid. I'm not seeing anything in this game that warrants performance issues. It looks okay. like on visual parody par with like a Sekiro or I even think Ghost of Tsushima looks a little bit better with respect to lighting. Now, Ghost of Tsushima, I can't play the open world co-op. I can't play all the missions co-op. You can play Legends co-op. So I do think maybe co-op could be playing a role. But overall, I'm not seeing anything visually that should be making it struggle to maintain 30 in quality or 60 in performance. Oh, I see what you're saying. 
Um, yeah, no, I don't understand why. I mean, I, I think, I think we, and we were talking about this in the last stream. I think we are seeing a sort of trend or a pattern beginning to emerge. So I guess this is sort of predictive on my part mm -hmm. that with, you know, with, with Unreal 5 and, um, you know, other engines of that ilk that are, that are evolving, you know, sort of the, the tech and the ability that these devs have. And with the, the hardware now where we're not, we're not making basically cross-gen PS4 and PS5 games here. You know, we've got games now like Rise of the Rune that are just on PlayStation 5 or just on yep. the Series X. Yep. Um, with that sort of shift, it feels like um, we're going to see a trend now of these de these developers trying to make their games, Starfield is another example, look aesthetically and fidelity-wise as good as they possibly can and the trade-off is going to be we're going to see a hit to the frame rate and the performance as opposed to games we were seeing three and four years ago that utilized technical stuff like uh dynamic you know resolution mm -hmm. so that it's you're always getting 60 and it's like when the game can be you know checkerboard 4k or whatever it is it will do that and when it's got to go down to even 900p or whatever to give you that solid 60 frames you know in the thick of combat or whatever it will do that and so it, it kind of fluctuates and they don't want to compromise maybe on that visual fidelity and that aesthetic like to that came out of todd howard's own mouth of like this is our vision we want you to be in this world the way that we envision it you know that means that we've made the creative decision to, to lock the frame rate um and so it seems like maybe this is just something we're gonna have to deal with is that devs want their their worlds to look and feel a certain way and I, I understand what you're saying is like this world doesn't necessarily look and feel a certain way that that would uh explain the fact that it's not hitting a targeted lock 60 um but i will say there's there is sort of like an, an, an aesthetic styling to this game that i think mm -hmm. i like more than other people especially you like you seem pretty low on it as do some others i think it is the closest we've seen stylistically to the kind of almost it's not really watercolor, but I guess sort of painted look of like a Sekiro. Like, I, I don't really know that anyone else has really quite gotten as close to that art style as, as this does. And, and this doesn't really nail that either, but they they seem to be sort of hitting on something that is very unique um, in that regard that, that I think only really Sekiro has, has done it. I like um, it. it, it I, I just want to say I like the art style. Like, I think Sekiro and Elden Ring are beautiful games. Mm -hmm. And while you were talking, we saw a really cool fight, and I think it was yeah. Games uh, GameSpot who said the combat's super satisfying. When you land some of these big parries, it just feels awesome, and that's what gets me excited. It's like, okay, I can get over a game looking a little dated. That doesn't bother me, because like, is one of my favorite games, and you can play Elden Ring right now, and even though it's not some next-gen tour de force, its art direction is magnificent, so it, it kind of yeah. makes up for it in style, and I do think Ronin hits an art style that I think is enjoyable, and the combat, if the combat's super satisfying, then I don't really care. Like, that doesn't, I'm not going to be worried, but my issue is if you're going to have a game look a little bit more dated, and, and, not, and not really leverage the fidelity of textures and lighting that we're seeing in other games, then I should be able to get locked in performance because if it has issues in performance when I'm in combat, that's going to be a huge turnoff for me. I agree, um, and I, I don't know why. I don't know why that's happening. Like this was going to be a, a, a day one purchase for me, and you might want to skip ahead because he's going to talk about Eugene for a while. Um, this this was going to be a day one purchase for me, and then the the frame rate stuff came out, and it's like. I don't know. Like, it's like, I don't know that I want to drop that 70 bucks if I'm not getting, like you said, like visually, this looks like it should be able to do what the God of War games can do, which mm -hmm. is 1080. Maybe it dips a little bit below 1080 to keep it, but it it's lock 60, man. Like, it feels so good, so smooth. And this game visually looks like it should probably be able to do that. And I don't understand why, you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know if Koei Tecmo just can't really optimize games, you know, that are pushing the tech as much as they're trying to push it. I mean, like, I will say, like, this game has some interesting stuff with, with lighting and with foliage. Like, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of trees and there's a lot of grass assets and stuff that's going on. And, and maybe they're 
they're overdoing it a little bit too much with that. I, I've heard that the town of Yokohama with all the buildings and everything is is the the most taxing on on the game as far as it it uh, rendering everything in 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 sixty frames or anywhere close to that. Like it it can really start to chug a little bit when you're in the in the city in the in the main space. Um, so maybe just with their assets, they've just got a little bit too much going on. I'm not really sure. Uh, but for whatever reason, like despite the way that it looks, whether you're a fan of it, whether you think it's a little bit dated or looks like looks like a PS3 game, like it, it seems like they just weren't able to maximize or optimize the performance out of it. And that's really disappointing because like you're saying, like it's not whether you like it or not aesthetically, it's not groundbreaking, right? Like it's not pushing any sort of envelope here in mm -hmm. terms of like what games look like right now. So right. you would hope then that it would give you very satisfying and reliable performance and if it if if it was going to give me 60 or you know 58 59 like 100% of the time i would go out and buy this but it's like because it supposedly will not and like you alluded to at the top of the show Dexter life said that he really didn't notice any problems but i think he even said that he felt like it was always at 60 but even with some of this b-roll like i can see it stagger a little bit like it's usually <laughs> right. in combat I, or something I like saw that a couple. you know yeah i yeah, saw yeah, yeah. a couple i, so I it's like i, I wonder know, too man. i wonder too given that this is just a ps5 game like there's there's a couple things going on there right number one that means that you cannot get this on old gen so playstation 4 users year out this reminds me of gotham knights when they like quietly said yeah. it's not coming to not coming to old gen that made me think oh the game's gonna look and run beautifully and then we all know how gotham knights turned out graphically and performance wise it, it didn't and this game only being on PS5, I think it stands to reason that expectations would be that we're going to get a very good looking and very solid performing game. The other thing at play there is it's a PlayStation game, right? You can sit here and say, oh, it's Team Ninja. It's not a first party studio, but they built this game for one system. And I've been yeah, in the corner. Whole argument the about the about the exclusives. That's right. I've been optimized. in the corner of the devs. I've been yeah. saying, listen, when you build for one system, you can optimize more. You can take advantage of power. And I think this is an indictment of uh, of Team Ninja if we can't get solid sixty. Right. If Put we rise the run it on Xbox. Right. It's like to me. Well, I don't yeah. think it's going to change anything. To me, I'd be very, very curious. Like, is it an engine level problem? Because, you know, now he's showing footage of, of Ghost of Tsushima. That's why I switch scenes. I don't want to confuse people. S yeah, Tsush yeah. Tsushima, like, was was built for PS4, and now the director's cut is out, and, and it's gorgeous. And, like, look, look, we, we'll, we'll show some Sekiro. But you know, that's the thing, scenes. Lono, is why, are, why do the games that were built for, for PS4... I, I, the games that were built for PS4 run amazing on PS5. But you're telling me that devs, third-party devs, can't make games for PS5 that run well on PS5? Like, why? I don't understand. Like, confusing. It, just, just dial back your, your ambition a little bit, I guess. Like, Sekiro looks and runs great on, um, on PlayStation 5. You know, like it is Lock 60 because it was designed for PS4. So I think this is just a case of like. Again, regardless of the way it turned out, like nobody sets out, no no development studio sets out to make their game look ugly, right? You know, like like even Babylon's Fall, they had a vision there with that game to make it look like like a watercolor painting or whatever, and it just ended up looking awful. But that you know there, that wasn't their goal. They wanted it to look pretty. They wanted it to look beautiful. So well, I think you know with this game, they had a vision in terms of what it was going to look like stylistically and how. The, how vast the scope of it was going to be. It's their first open world game. Like, I think they had a lot that they wanted to accomplish here. And maybe it just hasn't quite panned out the way that they wanted it to in terms of being able to optimize the performance. Like, maybe they just went for... They, they bit off a little bit more than they can chew. And it's like, the game is really only affected in that area, it seems like, is like, yes, it will be like in the 40s in terms of the performance, in terms of the frame rate. But like, everything else seems... Like, it's the best iteration of what they've done, what their formula has done so far. So it's unfortunate that, like, I may want to wait to play this game on a PS5 Pro or a PS6. But it seems like they just they just tried to make a game that kind of exceeds what they're able to do with the current hardware right now, maybe. Well, we're getting some feedback in chat. This is the second or third time somebody said that it has to do with the CPU. Mr. B is saying... 
that there's a more advanced NPC combat system, crime system, bond system, switchable companions during combat, which I saw that praised by multiple previews, you know, open world interactivity. And listen, I, I'm I'm willing to accept that when a game tries to do more, that performance is going to suffer. I think the challenge for this game is going to be you can't see those things visually. Like, I think somebody understands when they turn on quality mode, they're getting 4K, they're getting ray tracing, so they accept that they're going to get diminished performance. But when I put on performance mode... I am expecting to get 60 FPS. And so I'm not seeing graphically anything in this game that would warrant performance issues. Now, my hope would be that the performance issues are ironed out. That's a day one patch. That's a week one patch, right? We know optimization can come later. If it's as simple as optimization, I can forgive the game looking a little bit dated if the gameplay makes up for it. I think that's where games by Team Ninja and even from software they can sort of um, earn back the goodwill from the player. It's like, okay, yes, we're not doing this gorgeous, photorealistic, ray tracing, amazing, high textured game, but the gameplay delivers and you you sort of accept the game as it is. Now, somebody's saying Digital Foundry just released a video, so I don't know it's if that's... Their an... po- I just checked. It's their podcast. It, they don't they don't have hands-on or, or frame rate analysis or anything. That's what I would, I Yeah, I would imagine there's an embargo that, for that that'll be like yeah. day before day before or day of of the They're just chatting. It's of their the two-hour podcast. How much do you think PlayStation Studios' expectations have set then? Like, do you think PlayStation audience members and consumers are going to think similarly to us like if they've played Tsushima director's cut if they have a like you know they, if they have a PS5 I imagine they played games like Forbidden West Tsushima God of War Returnal Ratchet and Clank is that is that setting expectations that's going to make this game maybe not land too well with the PlayStation loyal I think that this game is going to surprise people in terms of its sale numbers I think the people are expecting Dragon's Dogma 2 to you know basically take it out to the woodshed and 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 uh, you know, whatever. Take it to task, basically. Um, I think it's going to sell very well. I think Team Ninja or Koei Tecmo are going to be able to walk away from this and say it's their best-selling, you know, game in, in this, like, sort of franchise, if you will, to date. I think sort of the commercial success of this is going to be entirely positive because it is being branded as a PlayStation game, like a, like a PlayStation kind of first-party game. Uh, in the way that we talked about that PlayStation marketing push is is serious business, man. And it's it's Japanese samurai and it's PlayStation and Shogun's out right now and everybody's eating that up. Like, I think this game is going to do very well sales wise. I think it's going to be just nerds like us on, on a certain quarter of the Internet that's like, yeah, this is super underwhelming. I think there's a lot of normies that are going to go out and buy this and are going to enjoy it it a lot and some of those people might not even play ghost tsushima or know it exists but they're they're paying attention right now and they see the marketing for it right now and they're like oh you can you can glide with a paraglider thing that looks like a chinese lantern or whatever you know like i mean like it there's just aspects of the game that it just it has some cool factor and i think there's going to be people that like really enjoy it but for like gamers you know gamers with a capital g like 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 us you know that that want to buy multiple games new games a month it's tough to justify a game like this when you know it's like this isn't what i wanted out of it like i wanted this to be more optimized and it's not and so it oh god the the frame rate on this that i'm watching it's behind it's like 10 20 seconds behind but yeah it's not looking good we've got more information too according to paul in chat they use an old engine that was never made for open world gaming they said that we created rise of the ronin from the game engine upwards looking back on the production circumstances i realized that the challenges of making rise of the ronin were inevitable see i think this is that yeah this is the danger of a trend chase right we saw elden ring you know, crush it by taking the From Software formula and launch it into the open world and taking the Team Ninja flair for high intense, fast, rewarding combat and saying, well, let's 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 launch this out into the open world. Likely we could be, as I speculated a little bit ago, we could be dealing with engine level issues because we're just not seeing graphics that would that would create those challenges. Now, talk a little bit about the story because I was getting very different feedback on story. Skill up seemed to feel like the story was somewhat generic and it kind of felt like a Ghost of Tsushima 
not not as good as Tsushima, but then I, I, I saw other people saying they thought the story was awesome. They you know they kind of got hooked from the beginning. And I'll be honest, when I heard the summary of the story, I thought that actually sounds pretty cool. You yeah. know, wh- where do you where do you see kind of the story landing with people given some of the feedback that we have heard? So I think skill up. It, it's subjective here. I think skill up uh, by some accounts was uh, largely a bit unfair to the narrative in terms of his his critique and analysis, but also for his audience who knows him, who's looking for a specific type of critique that he does, um, the the reason that I think that he was unfair was he basically compared it directly to Like a Dragon Ishin, because he was like, I played Like a Dragon Ishin in, uh, uh, recently, it is literally the exact same period of history, one of the characters is a is a figure from Japanese history that is in both games like this character is represented in both games and it's the same period of history and I thought Ishin did this a lot better and so like he's providing the analysis of hey if you're going to experience this story or you know this period of history I think Ishin is the better package to do that that was basically his analysis and it's like while on the one hand I think that that's valuable to know I'm glad that I know that it makes me want to go play Ishin now um I don't know that that's necessarily fair to Rise of the Ronin. Like, I feel like Rise of the Ronin should be critiqued from the standpoint of, okay, what have Team Ninja done in the past, narrative-wise? Not so great, right? Like, that's kind of the consensus opinion on Neo 1, 2, and Wolong. And it sounds like the people that evaluated this narrative in terms of the previews based on, okay, how does this compare to those three games? Everybody's like, oh, they stepped their game up. Like, they're definitely getting better at storytelling. Like, there is at least a noticeable uh, increase here in the the adeptness of the storytelling. And and I like what I'm seeing. Was, like, what the people that were positive on it. So I think it's just, like, what are... I think this game is going to be a, a telltale example of what are you going into it looking for? Because if you're going into this game looking for, like, an Assassin's Creed like two brotherhood maybe even like syndicate era like you know run around and do st- and jump on buildings and do stuff and but it's in it's in uh you know this period i think it's the edo period of japan and you know you are a samurai it's like last samurai tom cruise type stuff like it's that era where the west is coming over you know and with with guns and gunpowder and things like that imperialism and Japan's not going to be isolationist anymore. Like, you're getting all that drama and that intrigue, and you're getting the coolness of, of all those weapons and things that are at your disposal, and, and the architecture and all of the culture there during that period. You're getting all of that in, like, that type of open-world game. If that's what you want, and you're just like, yeah, that's sign me up. Like, that's the stuff that I... You're getting that. You're getting that here. But if you're like, I want this to be Ghost of Tsushima 2, or I want this to be Sekiro 2, or... I want this to be a game that justifies why I bought a PS5. It doesn't feel like, you know, or I want this to be as good of a story as like a Dragon Ishin. I don't know that you're getting that. So it's like, what are you going into this game wanting? And like, that's how you evaluate like whether or not it's a good purchase for you. And if you are just like sold on the premise, I don't think you should let anybody like yuck your yum here. Like, I think there's a lot of enjoyment to be had. The only reason I'm really going to abstain from this is just the financial aspect of like, I got to drop 70 bones on this thing. If I want to play it now, I am I can just wait for a sale. Like, like just the criticism that it's gotten. Well, you're going to play princess. Me... You're going to play princess peach anyway. So we know, oh, yeah. we know where your allegiances yeah. lie. Yeah, I want to, I want to bake pastries. Don't sleep on princess peach. I'm going to be playing that Friday night with my wife. I'm sure. Dude, it'll be fun. Yeah. Dude, my wife, my, my daughter, I don't know if you guys have played the demo. Is it fun? Dude, it's fun. Um, like my daughter's so excited about it, so I hope it's I hope it's a good game. Um, I I, I kind of want to respond to a bit of a back and forth in chat. Friend friend yeah, of the absolutely. show and and friend of Kirk, Ginger Prime's in chat, and he says this doesn't give me PS5 vibes. If it was just if I was just a casual that didn't follow up, gaming, bro. he says if I was just a casual who didn't follow gaming visually, it makes me think of the PS3 or the maybe the PS4 era. Now Eugene's pushing back and saying. This is far superior than like PS3 era. I think people are being hyperbolic, but I think they're being hyperbolic to drive home a point that if you're from the sidelines four years into the PS5 and you look at this game, it doesn't look current gen. It doesn't look next gen. It looks like something that I would have purchased for my PlayStation 4. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I do want to push back on, like, these people who are, like, Dragon's Dogma 2 and uh, Rise of Ronin, like, PS3 games. Like, did, did you guys have a PS3? Like, do you remember what PS3 games looked like? Like, right. they didn't look like this. So exaggerated, they look, they for look sure. They real bad, bro. Like, I don't... Yeah, like... I, I guess they're just... And and that's not to pick on my co-host, even though I I'm I relish doing that. By the way, he, um, he did he did say PS3 or PS4. Yes, 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 yes. But there are a lot of people out there that is talking about those games, and like I think it's literally just because like Dragon's Dogma, the original was well known. Like I think the PS3 version is the the sort of version that people think of when they think of that game, and so like they aesthetically have very much modeled the new game after like the way that like the character design looks and like certain th like I, it feels very faithful to the first dragon's dogma but like in a much much newer engine and like with much much higher fidelity but it still looks like dragon's dogma did just now in 2024 um and, you know to and to the furthest extent of like what technology can bring and I don't know if that's, like, why people are like, oh, it looks like a PS3 game. Like, I don't... I mean, like, sure. Like, it's because the the origin of the franchise was on PS3. So, like, kind of. But... So, I don't understand people saying that about Dragon's Dogma 2. And with this one, I'm not getting PS3 vibes at all. I, again, it looks more like a muted kind of more, more dull or drab like Sekiro to me like Sekiro is so vibrant in terms of like its color palette and the and 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 what it can do with like movement in terms of you know in the environments and there's if things are on fire and and stuff like that and there's a lot of like uh bright oranges and greens and 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 deep purples and blues and stuff like that um and and so this game isn't really pushing that but in terms of like the it's it's got like, like sort of almost like a painted sort of flourish to to it stylistically like like certain colors like pop and things like that and so like i think i think they're doing a good job here especially compared to like the first neo game which just looked i mean th that that game was so muted in terms of like how much it popped or was like visually appealing so i think that they are they're, they're getting better at making the games that they make i just wonder if people want them to make games that are more like other games because well, that's and that's I feel like what, what didn't you say I, I I'm not sure I've, I've got a you, ps3 but... I've got a ps3 screenshot here of an uncharted game just so people can see it is a bit of an exaggeration like you can see that the quality of games during the ps3 era were certainly hitting you know <clears throat> uh, impressive impressive for the time but here, let me give you another one. This one I think is a little bit better. Comparison at is it. the thief of joy, right? Like, I, I think, I think, as I said, with the narrative, like comparing it to Ishin, or with the open world design, comparing it to Ghost of Tsushima, or with the graphics, comparing it to, I guess, Ghost of Tsushima, or to uh, other modern contemporary, you know, contemporary games in this genre. I think that is sort of where people are not going to enjoy this game. If you, if you put this game in front of somebody that has, that doesn't know Ghost of Tsushima exists, and that hasn't played Sekiro, and, um, I guess that hasn't played Like a Dragon Ishin, I can't speak to that because I haven't played it, and doesn't know that narrative, that story about this period in history. Right. If they haven't played any of those three games, and you put the, this game in front of them, they'll probably think it's, like, one of the best games they've ever played. But it's like, those games already happened, so people are now... Like, well, why does this one exist? It's like, I don't know, because they wanted to make a cool game that's set in this period, and they wanted to give it good combat, and they wanted to make it better than the last three games they made. That's why well, they made it. I hate to say it, but I wonder if Ghost of Tsushima is, is, is playing a role here, because that was a PS4 game, Director's Cut came out, and it just got announced for PC, and everybody's going to be looking at Ghost of Tsushima saying, uh, that game looks better. Like, the, the tall grass, the graphics, the wind, the water, the lighting. Like, it just... I think that game looks better. Now, again, you said comparisons of Thief of Joy. This is definitely yes. a different art style, different approach. I know Team Ninja has never set their sights on, like, we gotta have the best graphics. But I am not fully agreeing with Ginger. I, I think maybe... I wouldn't go as far as he went with PS3. I do think anybody familiar with Tsushima... Or anybody who's been paying attention to PlayStation 5 games for the last four years is going to say, I agree, with Nin I agree with Ginger on this point. This doesn't look like a PS5 game. 
that's where I'm going to land on it. I'm going to say, you guys put this out front and center as a PlayStation 5 game, and it don't look like what? And the, the average consumer or casual gamer might come to a similar conclusion. Do most third-party games look like PS5 games, though? Like, I, mean, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think that Final Fantasy 16 is spectacular looking. I, I, if you watch Digital Foundry's breakdown, John Linneman points to all of the spectacular graphics in that game. I think the only issue with that game I've ever had is that they don't give me dynamic res outside of combat to maintain 60, but it's an absolutely gorgeous game. Like, art style, yes. People try to get freeze frames of the NPCs, and they're like, oh, they don't look good. When everybody was, like, doing the NPC Starfield, they felt like they had to kind of answer back and, like, make fun of the NPCs in Final Fantasy. It's like an art art direction thing. Like, they weren't going for photorealism. FF16, for all accounts from Tech Breakdowns, was highly praised for how gorgeous it really was. I, I think that's an actual great-looking game that... It only frustrates me on the performance front, to be honest. Yeah, and chat, I, chat I, agrees with you. Well, I, I think, also agree with I Ginger think, saying that game, gameplay is better. the center stage of Ronin. I do agree with that. I do think gameplay is yeah. the center stage here. I, I think I think 15 looks better than 16, but I, that could just be a stylistic preference thing. I, I don't know. Um, but, like, I mean, a lot of people crapped on Suicide Squad for how it looked visually compared to, like, Arkham Knight, you know? Um... I mean, this, 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 I don't, I don't know. If this is necessarily something new. You know, Hell Divers Two is, is what 1080p, right? Um, you know, what is a, what is a third-party PS5 game? I guess is what I'm, I'm just, I'm just sort of rebuttaling with that question of what, what even is a PS5 game if it's not made by a Sony first-party studio? I'm not sure that we've established that. Well, this would be considered what we've been referring to as like second-party, where PlayStation partners with the developer they don't own to make a game. So Helldivers, Final Fantasy 16, and Rise of the Ronin all kind of fit that bill. So I do think that's where the average consumer doesn't have a clue that... Well, that studio is not owned by PlayStation. All they know is that if they want to play Helldivers 2, they need to play it on PlayStation or PC. If they want to play Final Fantasy 16, they need a PlayStation. That's all they know. So in that category of games, I think Rise of the Ronin's falling into that category and just isn't... I don't think it's at that level that people are growing accustomed to because you can say Helldivers gets to 1080, but nobody know, nobody knows that. It's gorgeous. Like, people that play Helldivers are struck by how beautiful and cinematic the game is. People, mm. you know, people want to scrutinize, well, at this point in time, the resolution drops to this. Like, they did that with Final Fantasy 16 and Returnal. And I think that's just getting persnickety. Like, the average consumer didn't play Returnal and come to the conclusion that it didn't look beautiful. They weren't like, well, sometimes the internal resolution and upscaling, like, the average person doesn't have a clue about any of that. So I guess a good a good comparison for this is Hogwarts, right? Like, Hogwarts maybe. makes this game look, look not good. Well, yeah, I've not actually looked at Hogwarts recently, but I would wonder... I mean, this is, this is great footage of Tsushima just to showcase... Hmm. I mean, I sucker punch. I just they nailed it. Like they yeah. absolutely nailed the feel, the vibe, the lighting, the, the environments, the the use of color. Um, it's just really, really. I I think it's fair, and even here, Sekiro. I think it is fair to point to these games and say these are older games, man. Like what? Uh, what did y'all do here? Now I we're being kind of negative let's be positive i actually am looking forward to rise of the ronin because it's got co-op it has difficulty settings i can couch co-op this up i can friday night this game up with madam and play a samurai game with my wife i've consistently said man i wish i could co-op horizon or the full game of tsushima with somebody and now i can so talk about the gameplay is that enough Right now, you're kind of in like skeptical land. You're like, I don't know. I, you know, there's a yeah. lot of games coming out. I'm trying. I'm trying to save money. I'm not trying to buy every single game. Is the gameplay enough? Is the co-op enough? Is are those things? I mean, the combat we're seeing, I think, does look really. I love parrying, and I see so much parrying going on in the gameplay. So, I I just wonder if Koei Tecmo is trying to go a little too mainstream here um and again i do think this game will be commercially successful as a result but in terms of how people receive this game and how it's remembered which they may not they may not particularly care about if if they make a ton of money off of it 
But in terms of those things, right? I wonder if Koei Tecmo hasn't built up an audience over its last few games of like dedicated people that play Souls likes. I- I'm in this core of people, and and I think you might be as well. I'm not sure, but you know, people that enjoyed the Dark Souls games, enjoyed Bloodborne, enjoyed Sekiro, really loved Elden Ring, and then you throw us a a uh, mortal shell or a, a, a death's door or a um a lies of p and we're like yeah i'm gonna eat that up and i think that koei tecmo has like provided this sort of ancillary alternative thing of like oh from software i don't know when they're gonna give me my next game let's go play this let's go play neo 2 let's go play well long and i think those people like showed up for these games and bought them and I'm wondering if with this one, it's like they're going open world and they're going co-op and they're doing all this extra stuff and it's and the the enemies don't respawn right like uh you you kill enemies uh in the world like they're they're dead now at least that's what the previews are saying like it's not like I rested mm-hmm. a bonfire and they come back like yep. you don't drop your experience you know it's not really a souls like here. It's just the combat systems that they've used with the stances and the parries and that that sort of thing that Koei Tecmo has used in games like Neo and Neo mm-hmm. 2. Mm-hmm. And I wonder if like if people that like those Souls type experiences are like, well, okay, well that's not really what what I am looking for here. So I I don't know. I don't know. I think it will kind of live and die by so like some things like the multiplayer and and the and the open world basically everything that the game is doing that's new is trying to get a new audience it feels like to become more mainstream so it's like how are those things going to hit like are those things going to be really good to experience is the multiplayer going to be really seamless drop in drop out feels really good you know you can split up pretty far and go do different things or you know whatever it is like it, it, there's no issues doing it and it feels really fun and awesome when you're playing with somebody else that's going to be great like we've seen Helldivers have crazy success because of the multiplayer capabilities there and the fun that can be had so like they could really really deliver on that but it's not that like souls like experience so i don't i wonder if those people are kind of like you know i'll just wait for a shadow of the earth tree or i'll play lies of p again or i haven't played it yet or like whatever whatever I because this is not a Neo. This is not a Neo three or a Neo four. If you think Wolong is Neo three, and I, I just wonder. I wonder if they didn't establish like a very core base there of people that were gonna they're gonna show up for their games, and like now they're sort of making it a, a, a jack of all trades, master of none type of game. And I I just wonder how it will be received uh because of those changes and i th- i think the the evolutions and the changes where they're trying to do new things it's going to come down to whether they deliver on those things for the more mainstream audience as in terms of how this game is received and i don't know maybe maybe they'll deliver on that i'm not sure i remember when i first started reading the description of the game on the playstation store where it kind of got leaked by mistake and it talked about how you can affect the story and something that really stood out to me when i was listening to one of the previews is you can elect to kill someone or recruit someone and it completely changes the flow of the game because if you kill them then that's going to affect story elements and how the story progresses or you can recruit them and then then they're on your team and you can like have them going with you and switch between them and stuff and i i think that's a really cool take on <coughs> games like this because i remember in Tsushima that's a huge tr- like theme in the game of revenge and not being captivated by revenge and, and teaching people that vengeance and revenge isn't really the path forward. It's it's more about justice and doing what's right. And in this game, you're certainly given those choices of, well, I can kill this guy or I can have him join my team. And I think that's going to be a huge element of potential replayability, right? You could replay the game, kill everybody, replay the game, recruit everybody, and just see how much of a flow change that creates. I do like that more games are giving us this notion of we can impact story. Uh, I think that's something that people are really grabbing a hold of in Helldivers 2. It's more of like public, communal, organic, but it's still, we're having an impact. So, 
do you in games like this does that give you any kind of paralysis of like i, I don't know what i want to do because then you don't know what's going to happen if you kill or recruit oh no um, dude you know you and i are all over that like remember i talk about banishers like we love that type of stuff yes and we yes. love when devs can can excel with that type of thing so i haven't seen much about that sort of thing in the previous for this game specifically but i think that's one again that's a new feature, you know, in terms of the games that they've had before have been sort of one note. It's like that they've been getting better and better at doing a specific thing. And for better or worse, they're like, mm, we could make a fourth game of doing that thing and getting, you know, even better at it. But let's go bigger here. Let's go grander here. Let's get PlayStation behind us with the marketing and the push and the exclusivity. And let's try to do our version of this type type of grand scale open world game with consequences and choices and, and companions and multiplayer. I think I think this game will surprise people. I don't know that it's gonna be anything to write home about in terms of like when the year's all said and done, are people really gonna be like Rise of the Ronin, one of the best games that came out in 2024? I don't I don't think so. But I think for the month of March. With Princess Peach Showtime and Dragon's Dogma 2 in particular hogging all the spotlight right now, I think we're going to walk away from this like in April, in the beginning of April, and be like, oh, that game did well. And like nobody really hated it or like I, I think I think it's going to I think it, it people are lower on it now than they will be. Like I think the, we're at the low point right here of like what the take on this game is going to be. And I think it, it's kind of like the benefit of like when your friend tells you that a game's going to be bad or a movie's going to be bad and you like go you go see it or you go play it expecting it to kind of not be good. It's going to suck. And then you play it or you see it and you're like it's all right. I didn't mind that at all. You know like whereas if somebody's like oh it's the best thing I've ever seen, bro, and then you, you're like you're like this isn't that great. I think yeah. because everybody's expectations are low it's like it's right where it needs to be for people to be sort of like cautiously uh enjoying of it or satisfied by it you know but yeah. mildly satisfied by it yeah i just want to clarify when i mentioned ghost of tsushima and how like that's a huge theme in the game you don't really have those choices that's why i was saying like in ronin they're, they're actually giving you those choices and that's cool in tsushima the only choice you're given is at the very very end and we don't even know if that's going to impact sequel or not like will it sink your save and will the story be a little bit different whether or not you killed or spared uh the final fight but there's no moments in tsushima where you're like do you spare or kill this person but that's a huge yep. theme in the game of not being completely captivated by vengeance and revenge but that's just kind of part of the unraveling story it's not something you're necessarily but like with this directing. one what you're talking about the preview said like the fight now that that the viewers have probably seen a couple of times with the b-roll on the ship like the captain the british looking captain on the ship or whatever you get to choose whether or not you want to spare his life or or kill him mm -hmm. and the previewers were like i you know some people were like i didn't kill him and now i want to know like does he come back you know is he going to try to kill me am i going to be like oh i wish i'd killed him or is he going to help me you know like what's going to happen now because people can't talk about the full game yet and like that's cool like i i think that this game has some some kind of dark horse potential i think that all said like it'll be a game that's worth playing like it'll be a game where people are like yes you should play this it is a good time but i think right now when it's coming out and the fact that it's 70 dollars and the fact that it doesn't like green ps5 you know uh, uh groundbreaking gameplay or, or visuals or anything is like meh but i think it all said you know when this game eventually comes like ps plus essential or 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 whatever or or if it goes you know on sale for 35 40 bucks i think this is going to be like one that people are like yes i recommend it go play it it's a good good experience yeah, I, I am curious where it lands on, you know, Metacritic with the with the critics and the reviews and then also the audience. Like, I'm always curious, okay, what's critic reception and then what's reception when we go to, like, the PlayStation user score, right? So, you know, where where are people going to land on this? Because if if they buy it based on trailers, this, this is what I think is going to happen. If they buy it based on trailers, they know they're not getting some insane graphical tour de force. So they'll probably be more prone to give it a good score if the gameplay is good. 
right? Like, I'll give it a good score if the gameplay is good. But price is probably going to come into play here. You know, Wheezy and Chad is saying, if this was 50 bucks, I'd be more inclined. 70 oh, bucks yeah. is a hard sell. Yeah, is that 70 price point going to be a snag for people? Because 70 is kind of becoming synonymous with, oh, this is a big next-gen AAA title, and this game doesn't bring that presence to the table. It doesn't. It does feel like a more... You know, it almost feels like a cross-gen game. It feels like a game that was originally built for PS4 and that they, you know, that they brought to PS5, which makes that $70 price point another potential snag for people. Again, I think it's another one like Gotham Knights where it it was intentionally, it was initially intended to be that way. Skull and Bones is another one. And they just, you know, uh, over, over over-debbed it, you know, over, over, over overshot. And, you know, same thing with Gotham Knights. They were like, yeah, this has got to be next gen only because it's it's barely performing the way we want it to as it is on the next gen system so after cyberpunk nobody wants that for their game so people are making the call of like you know what we want we were gonna put this everywhere but and i i, I don't know maybe this was only developed for ps5 but it, it seems like that's that's the case here is like that it was going to be cross gen and then because of the performance issues that we've spoken about, or the potential ones, we don't know, it's not confirmed because we, we haven't played it. Um, because of the potential performance issues here, maybe that's why it ended up being PS5. But it definitely doesn't feel like it's a PS5 seller or justifier in, in any respect. Well, and it was apparently in development for a really long time, so I think that could mm. be another issue. Yep. You know, old old engine, maybe they ran into problems, maybe they decided that the only way this was even going to work was to shrink scope and not... Yep. You know, build it for PS4, and so maybe there's there's just some baked in limitations from either the engine itself or just the fact that it was in in development uh, for such a long time. So, I mean, I I actually plan to play this game and Dragon's Dogma 2 and Princess Peach on Friday. I'm I'm planning to do a triple header there. You know, the the, the Princess Peach will be a Friday night stream with my wife. But um, what what's winning? your attention guys while he's answering this question do me a favor as well and smash that like button we had a great turnout today this is probably one of our best turnouts for a show with kirk we appreciate the support on mondays for this the that's second true. show that we they love do. it when i don't talk wow. oh that's not true you've talked a lot today but it's been a little bit more equal i think that's what they want to see you know that's right they want that's me to right. get a chance <laughs> but what's winning your attention this friday right now if i said okay you can only pick one which which game which game is getting your money off it's tough. I think I think because I, I want to play this game on better hardware. I want to experience this game at full in its full glory in 60 FPS. I will wait to play it on the Pro or the PS6, whichever of those will will run it well. And for that reason, I got to go make some pastries, Lono. I got to I got to <laughs> got to be Princess Peach. I mean, you know, it, it, Princess Peach looks good. It's, it looks like a hey, fun game. It, they 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 developed it for the hardware. You know, they knew what they had. <laughs> and they're like, this is what we're doing. So, is it uh, is it sixty FPS though? I wonder. Probably not. Probably not. It doesn't it doesn't matter though. You got that Nintendo magic. I mean, right, Lono, I, I I really enjoyed it. We we had a good time. Yeah, we did. We did. And uh, before we go, guys, give us those 14 more likes, man. And while you're doing those 14 more likes, I'm going to update the description because it didn't It didn't tag him. Give me one second here. What's new video games? There we go. He should be clickable in the description now. I've updated the description. I'm going to schedule the writer's room. That's where we go every day to end our day. That's a great reason to be at the $6 membership tier or higher. And yeah, somebody you, gifted man. me a membership, so thanks, guys. I got a membership earlier when I was in the stream, so that's that's uh, your your gifted members going going to a good cause. <laughs> <Yeah>. Now <laughs> I got another <laughs> membership now, saving saving Kirk, you know, a little bit of scratch so he can maybe buy little, more than Princess Peach. A little bit Peach. of that Princess Peach money. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's going to a it's going to a good cause. It's going to to, to pastries. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I right now, as far as content goes as well, like, what are you what are you working on? What could p- people potentially find on your channel? I'm kind of setting up writers. I'll room. post a review at one of these days. Um, I might do a Princess Peach review. That uh, That's like a 15% chance because, again, if if 
if IGN posts a review like Wednesday and I get my hands on the game Friday, I've got no shot. So I'm just get, it's just going to be a case of like who has reviews up on Thursday. If nobody does, or if only a couple people do, I'm going to be download that thing at midnight and I'm going to kill myself to get a review up. But it, it's just like, it's tough, man. It's tough being a reviewer. I'm not getting codes early right now. So alone in the dark might happen. I still need to hear back from some people on that one. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The, the YouTube channel, I'm, I'm sort of, I'm trying to do written reviews now. So you might see my name on a, on Open Critic, which is cool. That's cool for me. Um, yeah. With my like English background and everything. But yeah, I, I got to figure out what to do with, with the YouTube channel because it, it's tough. It's tough trying to get reviews out um, when you don't get, when you don't get the game ahead of time. Because nobody really, nobody really cares like three days after the game comes out. So they want to yeah. know before they, before they buy it. So, but yeah, also, I mean. The, the the plus side of that is if you subscribe, I'm not blowing up your uh, your feed or your notifications or anything. So, you know, go ahead and go, ahead and go over there and give me a little sub. <laughs> well, it help, you know, you guys can help them there. I mean, that is one of the things that does help get those codes early is if the channel starts to grow and, yes. you know, looks a little yes. bit more impressive. So help them out there. And uh, I'm going to post a link in chat as well as in the Discord. This is the writer's room where we I hop on the phone with my producer and uh, and we plan out the next day's shows. Today was phenomenal with the PS5 Pro and then this show here. I'll see you in a week, Lono. It was a great time. All right, man. Take care. You too. Oh, that's the wrong scene. There we go. And thanks so much for being a Reforge member or higher. If you're at that $6 tier, this is the writer's room. This is where we plan out the next day's show. And we had a great day talking PS5 Pro specs. And then I talked Rise of the Ronin with Kirk. I'm going to actually end that previous stream. And there's a link in chat if you guys want to come to Writer's Room. And we are going to do a redirect. I like that. We just kind of get in, get out, under an hour, and let him go do his thing. He might be heading over to do something with Ginger today. I'm not actually sure. I should have asked him that. Oh, that was my mistake. I'm going to end that stream, though, and bring you guys over with redirect. And then I'm going to change that thumbnail to make sure that...